let's say that this circle right over here represents one, one whole. And we've divided this circle into one, two, three, four, five equal sections. So each of these sections represents one fifth. Each of these, each of these sections represents one fifth of the circle. And we've seen this already, one fifth, one fifth, one fifth, and one fifth. And if we were to then color in some of this, so let's say we were to color in three of these sections. So that's one of the sections right over there. Another one right over here. So we've colored in two of the fifths, and then three of the fifths. Notice, you put those three one-fifths together. How much have we now shaded in? We have shaded in three-fifths of the whole. So the fraction that's actually shaded in now is three, three-fifths. Fifths, three-fifths is what's shaded in. Now let's do something in some ways a little bit simpler, but also in some ways kind of interesting. Let's start with a hole again. So once again, this is one hole. Let me label it one hole. So it's one hole. And instead of dividing it into five equal sections, I'm just going to divide it into one equal section. So if I were to shade in, if I were to shade this in, so if I were to shade it in just like that, so I'm shading in my one hole, I'm shading in my one equal section. How many of the equal sections are now shaded in? Well, just to remind ourselves, there is one equal section and I have shaded in exactly one of those one equal section. I've shaded in the whole thing. Or I could say that one one-th, which you'll never hear someone actually say, is shaded in. Or I could say that the whole thing is shaded in. So this is equal to one Whole. So that's a whole. That's interesting. And I want you to keep in mind, remember, look, we have three, we literally have one, two, three fifths, and we literally call that three fifths. Now this is one whole. Now what happens if we were to do this multiple times? So if we were to, let me copy and paste that. So now I have another one whole, and then another one whole right over here. So now in total, how many holes do I have? Well, I have three. One, two, three holes. So I could say, and I've actually shaded in three holes. So this, is, this one right over here is equal to, let me make sure I label it right. This right over here is equal to, if I were to take the combination, this is equal to three, three holes. Or if I were to think of it in terms of numbers, just the number line, this is literally, this would represent the number three. But what's another way I could represent it? Notice, when I took a, a one-fifth, another one-fifth, and another one-fifth, I could call that three-fifths. So now if I take one one-one-one-th, one another one-one-th, and another one-one-th, well, I should be able to call this three, three-one-ths, or three-firsts, or however you want to call it. So I could call this three-firsts. So this is interesting. Now we're seeing where the top number on a fraction is larger than the bottom one. But another way of thinking about this fraction symbol is that it's division. So you could view this as three divided by one is equal to three. Or you could say, well, like one over one is a whole, and I now have three of them. So this is equal to three holes. So three over one is the same thing as the number three. And let me make sure, let me emphasize that. Let me draw this on a number line. So once again, let me, let me go all the way to three. So zero. One, two, and three. So one hole gets us exactly one jump on the number line. So this right over here, that gets us to one over one. We do another jump. Now we've gotten two firsts, I guess you could say. We've essentially taken two of these jumps. Each jump is one over one. Now we are at two over one, which is the same thing as two. You take another jump, you take another jump, and we essentially get to, or we do get to, three over one, which is the exact same thing as three.